in 10 minutes, I'm gonna get you from here to here. All right, let's go. Yo, I'm gonna be honest with you. Whenever I was younger, I thought that like using a camera was just so easy. I didn't even know that there was manual settings and all that stuff. And I always wanted to be cool because I saw the people like spinning stuff and like, I'm like, dang, I wanna be able to do something like that. So I'm gonna teach you how to be able to take photos, okay? You're not gonna need anything crazy. This is an A6500. You can get one of these for like 700 bucks. And we have this lens, this is like 100 bucks. So this whole setup right now that we're gonna be shooting on is cheap i know that cheap is relative but this is really just for beginners you can do this with any camera canon nikon it doesn't matter whatever camera that you shoot on all of these things are going to apply let's go so one of the first things you need is you need to have a subject yo tyler you want to be my model bro uh can you take photos but you don't want to take them i bet hi carissa you want to be my model as you can see here, we got like this really nice landscape. So go ahead and stand right over there. I'm gonna get you over there. Boom, we got ourselves a banger, baby. Well, it would be a banger. However, everything is just blown out. If you don't know the term, blown out means that it's pretty much completely white. We can't see anything in this photo. So here's the first thing we gotta know about. You need to know about this golden triangle and we're gonna get you on your feet shooting photos today, all right? So the first thing is this, ISO, okay? Some people say ISO, ISO, it's ISO, bro. Who cares how you say it, just know what it does. ISO is just how sensitive your camera is to light, okay? So ISO pretty much starts like around 100, it's probably like the normal thing, and then it can go up to like, I think it's like 10,204 or something like that, but you never wanna shoot that high. And the reason why you don't ever wanna shoot that high is because you can get images that look really grainy and really pixely. Have you seen all those little artifacts and stuff? That means that their ISO was way too high. And so why is it so blown out right now? It's just because our ISO is way too high. So we gotta lower that down because we need to make that sense less sensitive to that light. If the ISO gets lower, not only is your image going to be cleaner, but it's going to make the image darker. But on the other hand, you can raise it up so that you can get brighter, let's say you're in a really dark room. However, that means that it's gonna be so sensitive to light that it's gonna make it dirty, make it grainy, and it's gonna look like trash. It'll look something like this. We don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the ISO and let's see what that does. because of the bush, the, the, the bush is, the bu bush is good. Don't mess with the Sohan reference. The bush is the biggest mm. and the girls like this cause it's cushion. All right, I guess not, moving on. As you can see with the ISO, as we've lowered it down, now it's not as blown out anymore. Some areas, they still need some work. So the next thing you gotta know on this golden triangle is number two, the shutter speed. It's really how fast the shutter is opening and closing to get to the image. If we have a slow shutter speed and we bring it really down, like let's say like one over four or something like that. You've probably seen it in movies where it's like somebody's really like drunk, drunk or something, or something and, and it looks like, like really choppy, choppy and, everything and everything like, like that. that. Because it's opening more, that means that more light is coming in. And that means that the image is going to be brighter because it's letting more light in. On the other hand, if you have your shutter speed that goes a lot higher, like let's say like one over 8,000 or one four thousandth of a second or something like that, that means that that shutter is going really fast. Because it goes so fast, that means that there is less light coming in, which as you know, that means that it's going to make it darker. Let's recap here. ISO, lower ISO is gonna make it darker higher ISO makes it brighter. And then you have shutter speed. Lower shutter speed means that it's going to be brighter. Higher shutter speed means that it's going to be darker. Wait, did I say that right? You are right. Yeah, okay, cool. Sorry, I, I got tripped out. So let's go back and let's get some photos, but this time, now that we got our ISO in our back pocket and we know how to adjust the shutter speed, now we're going to get even closer to a properly exposed image. So let's knock this out real quick. Yo, 
you see how that just changes everything right now? First, when we had the ISO, it was way too bright, right? And then we lowered it and it got pretty close to being properly exposed. And then we got our shutter speed into the mix and then we were even a lot closer to get it, pretty much get it exposed as properly as possible because we were able to touch two of the three settings that we're talking about. Now, I know you may be thinking, bro, how do I know if something is properly exposed? You're telling me this, that picture looked pretty good to me. I thought that it was fine, but you said it was under, whatever it may be, your best friend is going to be the exposure meter, which is that little line in the middle and it says like one, two, three. That tells you how underexposed it is or how overexposed it is. So make sure that that needle is in the middle so that you can get the best picture possible. But wait, there's more. You gotta make sure to use your eye. That meter will be your best friend and it can get you pretty freaking close to what you need but you always need to be paying attention to your eye. Look at the sky, look at the person's face. Make sure that you are exposing for your subject, exposed for what you're taking a photo for, not for the sky, because a lot of times that can really throw you off. But now this is the part where it gets interesting and where you will notice all the difference. Aperture, sometimes known as f-stop, okay? And so that is pretty much that little number that says f4 or f2.8, maybe you've seen all these lenses, f1.8, they say all these different things. Aperture, simply put, is just this little thing inside of the lens it's like the little blades if you've seen it and they kind of open and then they close that right there is the aperture pretty much just how much light is being let in again you're seeing a trend here right so imagine that the aperture if we have it wide open we're gonna let more light in f12 you know f8 f5.6 f2.8 f1.8 like you're getting bigger and bigger and you're letting the image get brighter but as you continue to close it f10 f16 f22 it gets really small that means that it is going to make it darker whenever it is so small that means that pretty much everything is going to be in focus and then whenever it is wide open that means that less things are going to be in focus so what you see as the blurry background it's just stuff that's out of focus now that we got that crap out of the way this is the reason why it is the funnest part aperture is also what gives you the blurry background or known as the bokeh as we like to call it okay that's why a lot of people buy these expensive lenses that can go so low with the f-stop because it will let more light in it makes the background even more blurry which looks professional and it allows you to be able to shoot in darker places without needing all of this light Remember, this is about the lens, not the camera, okay? The camera is the one that does the shutter speed and the ISO. The lens is what does the aperture or the f-stop. So finally, let's recap. We have our ISO. The lower the ISO, less light comes in, all right? The higher the ISO, more light comes in, but you gotta be careful because the higher you push it, it's going to look worse and worse. The next thing is our shutter speed. The lower you have it, more light is going to come in. However, things might get a little blurry in the way that you don't want it to get blurred. Sometimes people use it to their advantage. Maybe you've heard of this term called long exposure or you've seen pictures of it where there's like light streaks or things like that and it looks so cool. But remember that when the shutter speed is lower, that means that it's gonna be more sensitive to all the motion blur that's going on. So that's why a lot of people when they do that, they shoot on a tripod. And finally, we have our f-stop or our aperture, okay? So remember, the lower the aperture goes down, that means that it is going to be brighter. But if we have a higher aperture, that means it's going to get less light in and it's going to get darker. But over here, more things are going to be in focus and over here, less things are going to be in focus. So let's go ahead and jump into these shots just so you can see that you can do this even with a cheaper camera and a cheap lens. Now before I hop into this and give you more examples on how this goes on, you may say, bro, I want the most cinematic thing, I want the most portrait thing, I want it to look so I'm trying to vlog, please! But here's the thing, when you're shooting at 1.8, shooting at even 2.8, when you're shooting that low, man, you do not have a lot of space for focus. So remember that it is on a plane. If we have a 1.8, that means that once you hit the focus point, there's probably only like anywhere from six inches to a foot that will be in focus. For example, shooting shoes is a really big thing. If you have the aperture way too low because you want all that blurry background, only one shoe is gonna be in focus and then the other shoe won't be. So you gotta keep a balance on those things. Bangers 
Bangers after bangers every single time. Yo, you gotta hashtag that is. Tag me on that. I'll be sure to check it out. I think they came out pretty dope, you know, just from where we're at and everything like that. This is a terrible time to shoot, by the way, but this is a good moment to tell you to stop letting the cars pass. Kayaka. All right, let's move on. But the best thing I would say is to go out and shoot. It doesn't matter what kind of conditions you have, go out and shoot, you will learn while you're on the job. So if you shoot in the dark all the time, just do everything we did backwards. So instead of shooting at a higher aperture, shoot at a lower aperture. Instead of putting a lower ISO, make sure to put a higher ISO. Make sure to know those things inside and out so that you can go ahead and just adjust for those things. If you wanna see some really cool stuff on how some of my friends could do this just in their heads, watch this video right there. These guys are professionals and they were shooting blind. I think you might enjoy that. But I think that is all that I have for you guys. Go ahead and like this video. Subscribe because that's what all the cool kids are doing. Follow me on Instagram at Keyboard King if you want to check out all the behind the scenes stuff that is going on. And I will catch you on the flip side.